Hey guys, welcome to part three of finishing up our research paper. Uh, this part is all about citations, and there's really two parts to do in the citations. The first part is creating a works cited page, and the second part is adding the in-text citations to our document. Uh, so we're going to do the works cited page first. So I'm going to scroll down to the very last part of my paper here and go to the, the very end of it and put my cursor at the end and hit enter to go to a new blank line. And from the insert menu, I'm going to go all the way down to break and enter in a page break. And so when I do that, it puts it on a, a, blank, a blank new page. And I want to title this page centered with the words work cited. Actually, I want to make that works cited page and then go left align. Uh, and from here, I actually need to now uh, add in all of the um, information about the web pages that I used to, to create this. Um, so if we go back to our original notes, one of the first things I had you guys do was create this list of resources. And so from this list of resources, you're probably going to have two main types of web pages that we need to cite. Web pages that have an author and web pages that don't have an author. Uh, so this first example is a web page that doesn't have an author. It's on footballhistory.org, and the title of the article is just called Football History. Uh, and so the way I would add this citation would be to put the title in, because it doesn't have an author, Football History, and I put this in quotes. And then uh, the next part of this is going to be um, the name of the web page that I got it from, which is simply history is the name of the website. If it had a date of when it was published, I would put this in here next. This article does not have a date associated with it. Um, after that, I'm going to put in the URL that goes with this document. And notice it turn, comes in there in blue underline. I'm going to fix that in a second. Put a period at the end of this and tell when I accessed this document. So originally I got this on March 30th, 2020 to be able to use uh, for this article. So I'm going to get rid of the underline of the URL. Uh, and that's a basic outline of, of what, um, what the citation should look like. Um, so to save us some time, I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to just grab um, all the citations that I did for um, this assignment and copy it. And I'm going to replace what I have there um, with my citations. And again, I want to highlight the fact that some of the articles will not have an author. This is an example, again, of an article that doesn't have an author. It has a title of the page, and it tells me the website that I got the information from along with the URL and when I accessed it. If I did have an author, I would put the author's last name first, then their first name. Again, use the uh, title of the web page to, to let me know uh, what article I was looking at on that web page. The name of the website, National Geographic. And this one does actually have the date it was published, so you do want to look for that along with the URL, and then again, what data I accessed it. And you can look uh, through all the examples that I put on here, because I'm going to share this document with you. Um, but you'll be able to see, again, author, title of the web page, the website in italics where I got the information from, the date that, I, that the article was published, the URL that the article came from, and then when I actually looked uh, at the article. So every one of these will follow, um, again, those same kind of principles, and it's just a matter of how much of the information is there or not. Um, so one of the interesting things about this that I want you to, to notice here um, is the weird indentation. So if I look at this particular um, example, usually I indent the first line of a paragraph and everything after is left line. And all of my references you can see have this special kind of indentation where the first line is not indented and all the lines after that are indented. This is called a hanging indent. Uh, and the way that I do that is I go to format, 
and I scroll down to align an indent, and I choose indentation options. And notice my indentations are zero, zero with a special indent called a hanging indent of 0.5. Uh, so if I were to get rid of this, what you'll see happen is the indentation goes away. Uh, but when I go back to add that back in there, so format, indent, indentation options, and I choose hanging, 0.5, it will do the hanging indent that I need for my works cited page. Uh, so that's this is basically the, the process you use to do the works cited. So you might want to take a minute now, uh, pause the video, go ahead and work on the works cited page because the last thing we want to do is add our in-text citations. And I'm going to do something very similar with that where I'll show you two examples um, and then I'll give you the, fin the, fin the finished copy of this document um, so you can see everything. So the two examples I'm going to do are actually these first two references that I have uh, in my document. Uh, and notice the works cited is actually in alphabetical order. Numbers come before letters but B, C, G, L, M, A, M, E, you know, all the way down, again, all alphabetized, and this is the proper way to have the work cited page. Um, but what I want to do right now, again, is cite in my paper where I use this information. So the way I cite um, an article that has no author this was about the 1930 World Cup, and I referenced that in my last section here. So this sentence, in 1930, the first FIFA World Cup was held in Uruguay with 13 teams, is in parentheses, I'm going to add the title in quotation marks to show this was the source that this information came from. And similarly, um, if I have a title of an article with an author, what I want to do with this one is remember that the author's name is Blakemore, and I'm copying the title of this. And this was from the National Geographic about the ancient history uh, of, of ball games is where that information came from. So I'm going to scroll up to the section where I talk about these ancient um, Mesopotamian, Mesoamerican games. And I'm going to add my parentheses again, and I'm going to start with Blakemore, comma, have the name of the article that it came from, and that is my in-text citation. So again, we have one in-text citation here that includes an author, and we have the other in-text in citation down here at the bottom that does not include, include an author. And both of those are um, legit ways to go about it, and um, again, based on is there an author or not, and you can do the in-text citation either way. So I'm going to share this document with you guys so that you have access to it to see how um, I put everything together. And as you guys are working on putting your um, final papers together and doing all this wonderful formatting, please feel free to ask questions. Um, this is the space where trying to get help with some of this information uh, it is really important because there's some technical things with the formatting. And then there's also some MLA requirements that we have to be aware of and follow to do this correctly. Um, so good luck with this. And again, ask for help as you're going, and I'll be glad to, to sort you out. All right, guys, take care.